would you say you carry with yourself a phenomenological idealism, not just an intellectual one, but that one that pervades your everyday experience and that you can some, or is that something for the non-dual meditator uh, as only in a way? I, I acknowledge phenomenological dualism. I, I had a conversation with um, uh, Robert Lawrence uh, uh, Kuhn from Closer to Truth. And in the meantime, he, he has already studied that publicly, so I'm no longer bound to confidentiality, <laughs> uh, 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 informal confidentiality terms. But um, he said, um, when I asked him, you know, we've studied everything there is to study about philosophy. You've talked to everybody for 35 years. What is your own opinion? And he said, well, a form of idealism-based dualism. And what he means by that, it's not substance dualism. It's all mind, ultimately, but there are these oppositions, these seeming dichotomies, these polarities, these, these, ex, this a, a spectrum, different spectra uh, of oppositions. Um, that is my intuition, too. I cannot defend it in a way that would allow me to write an academic paper. I don't even bring it up in books, except in my very first book when I was media naive. <laughs> and I thought I could just say everything, even stuff that I was I, I, that I, I couldn't defend very well. In my very first book, Rationalist Spirituality, I talk about a dualist operating system running on idealist hardware, if you, if you catch my, my drift. Um, um, a phenomenal, phenomenological dualism, but an ontological idealism. Um, so I, I share your intuition. Having said that, the older I get, the more idealist through and through I get, the more I sort of see through that spectrum and the more I sort of get naturally acquainted with the fundamentals and I start really living idealism. Uh, it's a process, a friend of mine more than 10 years ago told me this will happen because at the time I had arrived at idealism from an intellectual uh, um course uh, sort of a i went through an intellectual thought process that uh, gave me okay and the more plausible answer is idealism but i was not living it yet as well over 10 years ago 15 years ago or so and um this friend of mine said yep but over time you will start living your intellectual conclusions it will start sort of sinking into the body and and informing your daily experiences and and uh, yeah it did happen and it's still happening. So what for me before was, you know, phenomenological dualism running on idealist hardware. Now I am at the bare metal level. Uh, it's really idealism. It's, I, I have the idealist lenses with everything. I relate to the world, to myself, to others, really with an idealist lens. I still can identify the dualism, the phenomenological dualism, but more and more is sort of falling to the background. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where this is going to go eventually. So maybe maybe your your work is a contemplative practice in a way. That's what my friend said. That friend was Rupert Spira. Right. So, uh, I was having dinner with him and I was complaining to him that although I arrived at the same conclusions he did, I arrived at those conclusions from a purely intellectual process and they did nothing to me in terms of soothing my anxiety and my existential angst and all that. And he looked at me and said, it's going to happen. And I didn't believe him. I confess I didn't believe him at all. And one day, a few years ago, I woke up and I realized, oh my God, it, it happened. It actually happened. He was right. I didn't try to make it happen, Chris. I am not a spiritual guy. I don't follow practices. I don't meditate. I meditated when I was doing psychedelic experiences because it was sort of a, an investigation path I was in. So I, you know, I had a plan. So I did meditation and mind machines and binaural rhythms and all that uh, as an experiment. But um, I don't meditate. I don't follow any practice. Um, and yet it happens. Yeah, it's intriguing. I mean, I consider sometimes the science work as a form of contemplative practice in that yeah. regard. And I've become more agnostic over time. And 
I even have less challenging experience, less paranormal like stuff happening in my life, even. And so I never it's. had paranormal stuff. I, 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 I envy you. Um, I'm, I, I, I take it seriously. I don't think it's self-evidently untrue. I think it's just normal stuff that doesn't happen all the time. Um, but I, I have never had. Uh, well, I had a, a UAP experience one that was very bizarre, like high strangeness stuff. But it was like ten years old, and it's the sole example. So, I'm very hard-headed. Uh, for me to trip deep, at least, at least five dried grams of golden teacher. Oh, well. At least, it begins there. Very hard-headed. Baseline consciousness, very strong. Default mode network, militarized, very <laughs> defended. <laughs>